So what if he doesn't win? That's not my question, of course. <laughs> the world is talking about it all the time. And they're focusing on this big election that's going to occur uh, shortly here in the United States. But I want to talk about something entirely different. There is a political battle going on in the United States that affects the whole world because America, in many ways, is the world leader, the leader of the free world. And uh, this battle between Republicans and Democrats, or some would say between constitutionalists and uh, socialists, with between the difference between the individual receiving his rights from his creator and the idea that we are groups of people in society and are treated as groups and don't have an individual voice, this political battle is, is raging. But layered over that, there is another struggle that is going on. There is a, a nationalist, internationalist struggle. Um, the idea of nation states uh, versus a world government and all of these internationalist corporations and international organizations that are seeking to control the nations um, and people are wrestling over these issues as well. It's interesting when we come to the end of time when a millennial kingdom is uh, instituted, the Lord Jesus rules over the nations. He is called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the kings of the earth bring their glory to Jerusalem. And so God established nations he set the bounds of the nations, and he intends to have national identities in a world to come. Although they all recognize the supremacy and sovereignty of the Lord, yet uh, it seems there clearly are distinct nations. The Gentiles means the nations, and God will rule in that way. So over the national issues and the political battle, there is an international struggle, and this whole issue of uh, who controls the destiny of nations. Is it something we hand over to the United Nations or other organizations, or do we want uh, to be sovereign nations uh, accountable to our own elected officials? And of course, the whole Brexit move and in other countries, the struggles that go on between the distinction of an individual receiving their rights from God. And in America, of course, the idea was to limit government uh, so that it didn't interfere in the personal freedoms of the individual. A very different thing to the socialist notion. And the idea, idea there is if an individual lives for 70 years and a society lives for a thousand years, then obviously the society is more significant than the individual. But, says the Bible, an individual will live forever. And if we're going to live forever, then God considers the individual uh, a, a personal sovereign agent, someone who is accountable directly to God and that the government is not God. And these are very distinct. But uh, in addition to that, uh, there is a culture war. And the culture war is not specifically a political thing. It's not lined up by party so much, but the issues of abortion and gay rights and euthanasia and the legalizing of drugs and so on, these are real battles that people give themselves to with high energy, seeking to wrestle the culture into their corner. But over top, layered over all of these issues, the, the national political scene, the culture wars, and the international struggle, there is another layer, and this is the cosmic spiritual conflict that has been going on since the devil said, I will be as God. And we see it culminating. The Apostle Paul uh, talks about these issues when he talks about the mystery of godliness, that God humbled himself to become a man. And the mystery of iniquity, a man exalting himself to be as God. 
So I will be as God, and this is the devil's lie, and this individual will be actually, uh, in, in the, the devil will be incarnated into that person, and he will seek to bring all uh, humanity to be subject to him in defiance of God. Now, we read about this conflict in Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, beginning in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Notice, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. These other layers are all flesh and blood conflicts. That is not where our battle is. And so when I ask the question, what if he doesn't win? I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about the Lord himself. Is he not going to win? Listen, he's been guaranteed the victory. He leads us in triumph. He's already won. Our man is in and his seat is uncontested. He is the champion. He is the victor at Calvary's Hill. And so uh, we need to refocus our thinking. We are not here to be involved in political issues. The scripture says we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent a foreign government. We are living in enemy territory and we are seeking to woo men and women away from other uh, temporary and superficial battles and we're inviting them to join with us on the victory side to come over to Christ and to recognize his supreme authority so that it's not party platforms, it's not even social issues. It's the recognition of the divine revelation of God. We stand with him. We take his marching orders. Uh, we are sent into battle uh, at his direction, and he is the one who is accomplishing his will. Many of these people against whom we, we may seem to be fighting, are actually souls for whom Christ died. He wants to save Democrats as much as he wants to save Republicans. He wants to save um, Saul of Tarsus as much as he wants to save Nicodemus. And when we recognize this, it, it delivers us from all the anxiety and stress. We see um, Mao Zedong, uh, in, in his battle with Chiang Kai-shek. And the Christians might side with Chiang Kai-shek and say, look, there's communism and, and Chiang Kai-shek is claiming Christianity. Maybe we should side with him. Well, Mao won. Well, temporarily he did. But what's happened? The church in China is more vigorous than the church in the West. More Christians will gather to remember the Lord in China than in all of Europe. And so while on the surface the battle seems to have been lost, God still triumphs. He still wins. And so we need to lay hold of this idea. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling, but it's against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So yes, we need to be equipped. We need to be protected. It's not necessarily going to the store and getting a gun. Rather, it's to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. God is looking for people who will stand with Jesus in this. And when there are cultural issues discussed, many of these are moral issues. They are biblical issues. And we stand with God on those subjects. Yes, we are pro-life. Yes, we are uh, those who recognize marriage as between a man and a woman, because God does, and we stand with God. But to become involved in the political battle and the culture war, we can be distracted from the real battle. This battle that has nothing to do with flesh and blood. It has to do with spiritual wickedness. And so he says, you need your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In this society of turmoil, of dis distress of nations. We need to be able to look into the eye of a young man who's involved in perhaps uh, uh, damaging behavior. 
um, someone who's involved in in uh, abortion business, whatever it might be. We need to be able to look them in the eye and tell them that they are controlled by the God of this world, by the enemy of their souls. These uh, big tech giants that have spoken recently before Congress, they think they are sitting at the chessboard and that they're moving the pieces on the board and that you're a pawn that they're using to their advantage. And they don't realize that standing behind them is the prince of darkness and he's manipulating them to accomplish his purposes. They're pawns in the game. But then standing behind him is the king of glory. And he himself is allowing Satan to do certain things that in the end will bring the checkmate, will bring everyone to the feet of the king of kings and lord of lords. And so we side with him. We see beyond the superficial. We see beyond the temporary battles. And we recognize there is a sovereign will of God being worked out. And if we're going to be in the battle, we've got to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and ready to take that message to the world. We have to have in our hand the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and proclaim the truth of God. We need to have the helmet of salvation. In other words, our minds need to be protected from all the propaganda and all the distressing information. We need to lay hold of this idea that God has saved us, he is saving us, and he will save us. We know the end of the story. We know how it comes to its conclusion. And so we are protected in our minds from all of these cross currents that could cause us great distress. And then he says, praying, Verse 18, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Do you wonder why every time you open your Bible, every time you pray, you go through a struggle within? It, you have to fight your way to, to the throne of grace? Look, here's the scene. We're here on earth. God is in heaven, and in between is this realm called the heavenlies. And the heavenlies, yes, they're the place of our blessing. They're also the place of our battle. The enemy is there in the heavenlies. That's what we read here. Spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. And in order to get through to God, we have to fight our way through to get there and fight our way back to begin to serve and to evangelize and to labor for God in this world. The Lord Jesus said, I have sent them into the world, even as you sent me into the world, he tells his father. As far as Christ is concerned, I was born from above. I was born in heaven, and then I was sent on a mission into this world. That mission is not to win a political battle. It's not to win, even win the culture wars. Certainly not to be involved in this international struggle. I'm here in this cosmic spiritual battle. I represent the God of heaven. I stand up for Jesus. So some of us would prefer if Donald Trump won. Maybe others prefer someone else. But never forget, our man is in. Christ rules supreme. The Lord reigns. Put that over your TV when you're watching the, the news regarding the election. The Lord reigns. God is on the throne. And Christ is triumphing. And he doesn't want us to be distracted by side issues, by side skirmishes. He wants us to confront the enemy head on with the spiritual weapons of prayer. Not clever arguments, not uh, political wranglings, not debates, but with the gospel with the word of God, with prayer, with our minds protected by the salvation that he alone provides. And may God help us. Whoever wins, as far as this world is concerned, that we're going to win because of Christ. He always leads us in triumph through our Lord Jesus Christ.